Notre Dame is number one. Notre Dame with a miracle win is a He's going again. Notre Dame and score. Hey everyone, it's Brian here. Uh, we'll get started with Coach Kelly right now. So go ahead and uh, and and uh, operator can queue up the questions, and we'll get started today. We'll take our first question from Brian Hamilton with Chicago Tribune. Hey, hey Brian, do you have any uh, injury updates from last night with Devaris and Kavari and where they're at moving forward? Yeah, Kavari uh, had a head injury, uh, cleared up nicely, and uh, he looks to be uh, on track for uh, practice on Tuesday. Uh, uh, Daniels had surgery this morning on a broken clavicle. Uh, he will be lost for the rest of the season. We'll have him back for for bowl game, however. Uh, the way he was trending, is that a particularly tough loss given the, the way things have gone the last couple of weeks for him? Well, certainly, yes. We, we think he was making really good progress, uh, learning how to play the position, uh, learning how to practice. Uh, you know, he's, he's made really good progress. This will be a temporary setback for him, and We'll have him out probably, um, you know, probably three, three and a half weeks where he'll start running and non-contact, and he'll be he'll be ready to impact uh, our team in in the uh, postseason. I'm just wondering, uh, how did your coach's ballot shake out this morning? I voted Notre Dame first. Uh, I had them second last week uh, to Alabama. Of course, Alabama lost, so I'll typically move up uh, the next slot. What, I guess, I mean, for obvious reasons, you have Notre Dame first, but are there things that you like about your team and how it's trending here towards the end of the year, and are there areas that the head coach also are concerning you as you go to the real stretch run here in the next two weeks? Oh, never ask a coach what concerns him about his team because <laughs> this could be a 40-minute conversation, but here's what I do like. Uh, we've played a tough schedule. Um, you know, obviously uh, wins uh, on the road against Oklahoma and – uh, Michigan State and, and certainly showing how to uh, beat a, a top team in Stanford. Um, th th those wins are, are, you know, big wins for us. I think we're tested. Um, and I like the way our quarterback's developing. And uh, he's getting better and better each and every week. And uh, those are all the positive things. Do you feel like as strongly about your defense now as you did earlier in the year? Um, Yards are a little bit up. I know you're mostly concerned with points anyway, but yeah. where do you think your defense is at here in the last couple of weeks? No, I, I, I like where we are. Um, I think, uh, you know, you have to play great defense uh, to be number one in scoring defense in the country over the long haul. And, right. you know, against BC, that's the first time they hadn't scored a touchdown uh, this year. Uh, you know, we felt like Reddick was, uh, was an outstanding quarterback. So, no, I'm, I'm really pleased with what we're continuing to build on defensively. And, uh, again, I think there's some young players that are, that are playing even better at this point. Um, you know, again, I think Bennett Jackson probably had his best game. And Prince Shembo was outstanding. Great. Thanks, Brian. Yep. We'll go next to Eric Hansen with South Bend Tribune. Hi, Coach. I was curious, when you were a D coordinator, were you a 34 guy, or was that something that you came to like later in your career? Um, I started as a four-down coach, and uh, three-down became something that I was more interested in uh, because of what we did offensively, um, you know, spreading the field. I thought three-down would be uh, something that uh, needed to be part of your package. But started as a four-down and kind of – uh, exactly where we are right now, and that is blending both four down and three down together. And I wanted to ask you about that blend. I, I've not seen a 34 that flips so seamlessly to 43 where all the pieces kind of fit together. Is Chembo a big key to that? And if you ever had a defense that could move back and forth so seamlessly? No, I think we have the pieces because we recruited to it early on that allow us to do it. I think it's going to get better. I think the personnel will continue to, uh, uh, you know, allow us to do what we want to do um, in, in moving both three and four down. But clearly, uh, the ability to put Prince Shembo's hand down on the ground and then back him up, and Danny Spahn, uh, his ability to play in space, play a number two receiver, and then line up over a tight end, uh, it starts with those outside backers, and, and we've got two guys that allow us to do that. Brian, I know that you don't like to – you've said that you don't like to campaign for your team in terms of uh, the 
top two spots in the BCS that you don't feel like it works. But from the standpoint of, you know, people talking about style points, I think your style points are on defense. Do you feel compelled to let people know there's beauty in defense? Well, I think you take a look at each team. Each team has their own distinctions. Uh, the distinction of this football team, it's just the number one scoring defense in the country. Uh, it's proven that against uh, very, very good teams uh, all year. Uh, we make it very difficult for you to run the football. So, um, again, I think if you look at national championship caliber football, uh, you've you, you got to look at a defense. And so that's why we feel strongly that our football team is – has put themselves in the discussion. We'll let others decide, but you know, I think we've played our way into the discussion. Everett seemed to have a really efficient, clean game last night, at least from an outsider's point of view. I wondered if there are things that you saw in his game that you feel like, okay, we're here, we're not going to go backwards with this. This is going to translate into things moving forward. Yeah, I think uh, setting his feet, uh, I thought he did a much better job. There are areas that we can do a better job with him. And then I like the way he ran north and south. You know, he stuck his foot in, his gr in the ground and really picked up some, some key yardage for us and running the football. And I think what we're going to see here is a guy that can hurt you both at throwing it, uh, escape ability, and then running the football. Uh, ball security was really good. If we trend that way and continue, uh, then we've got the makings of a, a quarterback that's, uh, you know, getting to the level we need him to be. And last one from me, how, how did Manti grade out for you? You know, it's a good question. Um, you know, he, he was a, th there were there were a number of times where they were trying to attack him specifically. And what I really, really uh, liked about Manti is he was one eleventh of the defense. In other words, he did his job. He didn't try to do more. And that's just the mark of a great player that he kept his eyes on his work and and played really solid football for us. Thanks, Coach. Yep. We'll take our next question from Pete Sampson from Irish Illustrated. Brian, I was wondering if you'd talk a little bit about Eshock Williams over the last few weeks, what you feel like you're getting out of him and kind of the improvements that he's made. Playing with, um, you know, he's playing a lot faster. I, I think that's probably the thing that stands out the most. And he's making progress, uh, you know, to the level where he could be a guy that – uh, really influences the football game. He made some plays on Saturday where he tracked down some plays from the opposite end. Uh, but it's just uh, understanding how to play the game, and, and he's, getting, he's getting better at that, and we're seeing it tangibly on film each and every week, and he is as well. At, at the end of the game, it, was, it got a little chippy there. Did you get much of an explanation about what happened with Lewis Nix? I think the big fellas were, you know, grinding on each other all game and, and uh, it seemed to get, um, you know, a little, uh, maybe a little personal in there. Um, but certainly we talked to Lewis and, uh, you know, he understands that he's got to control his emotions. Thanks. Yep. And once again, that's star one to ask a question. We'll go next to Sean Spires from Irish Sports Daily. That's kind of where I was going to go with, with Lewis, Brian. I mean, guys get chippy all the time do you do you feel like from what you saw it you know that the ultimate <laughs> result was warranted i guess well i think anytime there's late in the game like that it gets a little chippy i think the officials are going to make certain that it doesn't escalate uh, so i can't i can't fault them on that uh, lewis was uh i'll give you the specifics and he, he felt like one of his teammates uh Somebody took a cheap shot at him, and uh, he didn't like that. And then, it, you know, I, I know you kind of keep getting asked about style points at this point, and, and I, is the ultimate style just 10-0 right now regardless? Without question. <laughs> you know, I, I think if you want style points, look at our defense. Uh, look at the schedule that we played. Uh, Ten FBS teams. You know, I, I think that uh, it's pretty clear that the, this football team has been built around its defense, and we've lived up to that each and every week. So we'll just keep working on one win at a time and <clears throat> let other people figure out where, where that puts us. All right. Thanks, Brian. Yep. 
and we'll go next to Lou Samaji from Blue and Gold Illustrated. Good afternoon, Coach. Uh, it seems with every great Notre Dame team, there is one identification on offense, a bread and butter play or so. It seems like that stretch play, especially yesterday and particular to the left side, seemed to be always getting you that six, seven yards or putting you in good position, second and shorts, et cetera. Is that a play that you think has now evolved to a point where it's become a signature play for you? Well, there's no question that uh, w when we went back to uh, zone principles that the inside zone and the outside zone are going to be, you know, the staple plays, the bread and butter, if you will, the, the things that we, uh, I'll give you another analogy, throw your hat on. I mean, all of those things come to mind. We, we feel like uh, those are who we are uh, as an offense in terms of running the ball. Uh, add, uh, you know, some power in there, which has been a good play for us as well. But I think you're, you're right on that, uh, you know, the inside-outside play is, is who we've evolved to offensively this year. It, it seems that you just have gotten a lot more confident also with the speed option. I, I, don't, I don't know if ever really had in mind to pitch the ball, but he ran with such an aggressiveness. Um, yeah off that play even when you had somebody else in the backfield is that just the developing confidence because earlier in the year it seemed there was perhaps a hesitation or a doubt about running the ball well there was a hesitation for me calling those plays that um, you know obviously require um, a skill uh, they require a repetition and, uh, you know, anytime you're, you're putting the ball out there in the perimeter, uh, you know, there's a risk factor. Uh, wasn't comfortable with that risk factor. I am now. The way he's handling the option, he read it right every time. They did not have a hat for him. They wanted to play the pitch. And as I mentioned earlier, um, put his foot in the ground and got us some really tough, tough yards. I think when you're uh, executing option uh, with a player like that, uh, it really – uh, makes it difficult for a defense now to uh, bring pressures. Thank you. Yep. And once again, it's star one to ask your question. And at this time, there are no further questions in the phone queue. All right, thanks, everyone. We'll have a transcript posted on our website later this afternoon. Oh!